Hello, this is Larry Kitchen, and this is how to paint an apple. Well, there you have my name, and uh, I've got a step-by-step -step here showing you my palette. You'll notice it starts with white, and black is at the far right. That's a piece of glass there in a vertical position. And as usual, I start off by just visually measuring uh, the apple that I'm painting. I started with a top and a bottom. And when you have defined that particular height, then you ask yourself the question, how wide is this thing? And so that's what uh, I was doing on the four spots. Now, now I'm just doing a quick linear construction of the shape of the, of the apple and onto the shadow here. Now, that's turpenoid with uh, some thin oil paint. I found that you can draw very effectively with that in a race with a rag and turpenoid. So it tends to be a very quick and easy way to lay out a project. So doing a, a couple of little adjustments there and I'm ready to start painting. Now I've used CAD Red, a little uh, Indian Red, Lism Crimson in there, and I found the, the darkest place on the apple to start. It just happened to be in the center. So uh, you'll notice that I'm using a combination of alizarin crimson, Indian red, and, and cad red uh, to sort of lay out the basic shapes. I typically squint at the object that I'm painting to see the darks first. And I'll begin with uh, those dark areas and then work from there. Now this technique is called an ala prima painting technique where you lay in pretty much the color or the tone that that is apparent to you. In some cases you'll plan for a secondary buildup. I, I call this the block in and then as soon as I have the white of the canvas covered uh, with the tone or the color that occurs to me then I'll try to make a second pass uh, and detail and finish it. So as you're seeing these different areas I'm using sort of a loose hand. Uh, by the way this this uh, video is sped up four times, so I paint uh, rather uh, with a slow hand and uh, you know mixing and dropping those those colors in. Um, so it's I don't paint in this frantic pace that you're looking at right now. Well, there you have the uh, the entire apple is covered at least, so no more white peeking through, save the white highlight on the right. And now it's a thousand adjustments. Uh, my friend James Tennyson, who's a painter in the Dallas area, uh, said that about some of his portraits. You build that construction and then you make a thousand tiny adjustments over the life of the painting. You notice uh, edge treatment. Edges are very important when you're painting, especially a silhouette object. Uh, it's important to slow down and get those edges uh, done well. You'll notice the brush was was drugged fairly slowly um, after it's laid on the canvas and then pulled. That looks fast there, but if you can imagine painting, um, you know, four times slower than what you're seeing, it's it's kind of a slow process. This whole painting, I think, took about 25 minutes. Uh, so uh, a slow stroke can be uh, the right stroke um, if you mix the right color and lay it in the right place. Now I'm on to the shadow, and I am working from uh, a photo uh, that is from my painting one class. So uh, some of you will be able to refer to the photo that, that I was working with. And uh, interestingly enough, I got this shadow a little bit too dark on the left-hand side. So here's a trick coming up right there with a rag. I just pulled out and thinned down that dark paint and then laid in some white and cerulean blue uh, with black uh, just to transition that shadow as it moves away from the apple. In the photo it's a, it's a rather dark one so uh, I may have painted a little bit on the dark side so I'm still doing some adjustments. So while I think about that I'm going to lay in the color that appears uh, in the background. It's not pure white and uh, for those of you that can see the uh, the original photograph, you'll notice that if you flick your eyes from the white of your screen to uh, this bluish-white background, that'll help you see what kind of color to mix in there. 
Now, as you're trying to paint uh, your apple, you may want to pause this along the way on each step and just build as you go. I think you can see that it's not extremely complicated. It's just a matter of uh, working each little part uh, separately and looking continuously over and over at the subject and asking yourself uh, what is that tone that's, that lays before you. I think uh, you're looking right now at some small adjustments. Turn the brush on the side to kind of speed up the wash in of that area. And then I'll slow down around the, the stem of the apple. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't painted first, so I have to go around all the objects at this point. There's a little correction as a little flare of red came from the apple. And this uh, top edge of, of the piece bothers me. Well, we're about done, I think. No, we've got a few more highlights. Um, and that's right, on this one, uh, the transition from the pure white uh, highlight on the shiny apple surface was kind of interesting. Uh, some specular highlights are there. And so you don't just drop a chunk of white in place, sort of work that edge over. And then this apple, red apples have green in them, which is fortunate because it's an opposite complementary color scheme, which uh, makes the painting a little bit more excited, uh, exciting when you have opposites against each other, it makes things sort of vibrate and bounce. So I'm pushing the, the green tone at the bottom and around the surface. Now in closer inspection, I noticed that there is a lot of modeling and variation of uh, little dabs of color here and there. So with this piece 90% done, uh, I've pretty much added that last little step for you. Good luck on painting your apple. I hope uh, it goes well. Uh, just use this as a guideline on getting your apple done, and I think uh, you'll enjoy the process.